Now, cluster reviews um, is it's just some notes I made yesterday about what you want to make sure. Um, when they say preferred skills, they almost mean that it's needed. Like you can't, even though they're saying preferred, the the classroom that's going to apply to that particular cohort is going to have those skills. So make sure you have those skills. Don't just fall for preferred as well. Like, well, if I don't have it, they just have for preferred. Such a competitive program, you want to make sure that happens, that you have the skills. Uh, if they've asked for entry-level skills and you have too many skills, please don't show off and talk about how great your skills are because they are going to take it as a flex. They will actually take it as you have not adhered to instructions. And if not, if there's one thing that this is like academia of is when you try to sound like a smart ass, you don't want to sound like that. You want to sound very humble um, and following instructions that they've asked for. Don't send emails to professors, even though their email addresses are listed there. Those are listed not for you to send emails saying, hey, I thought I'll just make friends with you. I found your work interesting. Don't do that. That's going to get you in trouble. It's, it's definitely not going to go well with the professor. If you have specific questions about the program, send it to that generic email address. Even if you have a question about a prerequisite, send it to the generic email address. They have interns and students working for them who will answer those. If those think they think that's a need that needs to be addressed by the professor, those people will reach out. Okay. We'll go over some of these. Um, I'm really over time now. My apologies. I need to give it over to Anu now. But um, you know, clusters with less prerequisites will be a lot more competitive. So look for look for boring clusters and Clusters that don't sound as interesting will be an interesting way to think in a reverse strategy, reverse psychology. Um, choice one clusters will attract less applicants. So if that is an area, like I saw on math, my cluster was a choice one cluster. Go for that. Um, applying to related clusters matters. So if you're applying to two different clusters and are totally different, that does send the wrong message. So um, you can be a repeat applicant. And if you really like what you're applying for, talk about how you improved in the last one year. You can be assured that professors who are reading the application, if even if you write a line like, this is the second year I'm applying to this cohort, this is why I loved it last year, this is why I love it even more, that's going to go very well. This is also to the question earlier Anu asked, which is, which is a good year to apply. Choose a strategy which is going to be and stay consistent with it over the years. Um, clusters that have come in this year, um, and I think um, these have gone away from San Diego. New ones that have come in from Davis is here, one new one, and then um, UCLA actually added two more this year. So UCLA, we had two students last year that went to UCLA and uh, they did some of the other ones and uh, they really liked it. So... I have a. Uh, I've taken the all the clusters and broken them down into by prereqs. Um, your goal should be as a seventh eighth grader only to apply. Like I've put in, I'm going to highlight this a little bigger. But clusters, like UCLA, only has one program which I could find for the younger students. Uh, Irvine also has just one program. So maybe not the best one to apply for. Santa Cruz and San Diego had good ones. These particular cluster five, six, seven, and 10, and then one, two, and nine, which are good ones for eighth graders to apply. And I was just purely looking at the prerequisites and looking at the details. Some obviously are requiring computer science programming. Maybe some of you have not done algebra too. Uh, if you've not done it, then don't apply for it. But this is kind of just a high level. And if you meet with me later, I mean, I'm happy to go over. And this is what we do for every one of our students. We go through the structured refinement process to say which one to apply for. Ninth graders, as I was talking earlier, there's a lot of good programs, but they are expecting you to have done integrated math two or algebra two. So most high achieving students who apply to Cosmos are at algebra two level uh, in ninth grade. But if you're not, that's okay. You can move to the earlier cluster. Um, they don't take too many 
eighth graders, but I've had two eighth graders in the last two years make it. So my hit rate has been 100% on that. So take it for whatever it's worth. Um, but uh, UCLA has three, so you could take two of these. Um, you obviously want to apply to, uh, so if, even as a ninth grader, so here's my reverse thinking strategy, okay? Which is, if there are only three clusters that I can choose from um, as a ninth grader, you can be fairly assured that lots of ninth graders will apply to two of these three. And they are trying to build a holistic class, so they don't want only ninth graders or only 10th graders applying. Uh, they will have a quota of how many ninth graders they're taking or 10th graders. Maybe applying as a ninth grader to Irvine is a better idea. Uh, and obviously you want to stay within the course of the program that you want to apply to. Um, Santa Cruz has four, so that might be a great one. But clearly Davis and Irvine will stand out for ninth graders or yeah. So, and then 10th graders, you can see uh, Davis and San Diego both and even uh, all of them actually. 10th graders, the world really opens up because we are like this kind of a program, this is none, no prerequisites. You try not to apply for these nuns. I mean, these are, unless you really can showcase prerequisites, a lot of people are gonna apply to these. Even these kinds, which is just says, algebra, algebra two or integrated math two, it's gonna be pretty high the number of people applying. Same here, lots of people applying, but um, like high school chemistry, how many 10th graders have taken AP chemistry or chemistry honors? Quite a few. Um, High school biology, ninth grade, all of them have taken this. So ninth and 10th grade, all will be applying to this one. So you can see how competitive applications can become very, very quickly. And 11th graders, I've actually reduced the list as well. I took away, so San Diego had three good ones. Then- In 10th uh, in, 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 in grade, we have four. What's that, Amit? Amit, were you talking to me? Okay, was... <laughs> well, we have a few questions pop up rele relevant to what you discussed. Okay. So if I can run that through very quickly with okay. you for a okay. one-line answer. So of course, the, the common repeated question asked is the what, what is the easiest Cosmos cluster to get into? And I think you alluded towards it. Yeah, the easiest one to get into is which is sounds the most boring here on the topic head. When you start reading it, you really have to rack your brains to think more about it in details and uh, has the highest number of <laughs> prerequisites. Okay, the next one is uh, 11th grade student has a choice between a paid internship at an engineering company in California. And is that better to pursue or Cosmos? 100, 200% Cosmos. Academia respects academia at the end of the day. If people are gonna read applications for Harvard or Duke. Those are gonna be people in the, I mean, there's demonstrable tangible data you can get about somebody from a research internship, which they can never get from an internship because it's written by a corporate dude. Academia does not really respect corporate. So let's be blunt about that. Okay. Would it be acceptable to have a research mentor be a second reference? Yes, as long as they have an EDU email address. Okay. The student needs to do biology, physics, and chemistry to apply, or one should be sufficient. Should it be an AP course? It depends what they're asking. If they're saying just if they say the word high school level chemistry, they're not being very specific. Sassin, but if it's like this this case, if you've done AP Chem, that's great. Talk about it. And make your accolades even higher. Saying, make sure you talk about it. Why you did AP Chem and why chemistry matters to you. So in fact, you could write about that to your recommendation teacher, and that teacher could add that in that form right here. Good. You could write over here the details. Okay. Can a UC scout intro to Java course count towards computer science prereq? It might. I mean, the, the prereqs for computer science, they are very clear. They don't say the words. Um, they just say introduction to computer programming. So if you've done intro courses, as long as are not from Coursera or something, but if you have if you've done it from an academic institution, which is like a community college or UC scout, you say UC scout, right? Yeah. Yeah, or BYU, that's perfect. So I think the next uh, question is the recommendation letter from an engineering class teacher. Would it be helpful? I would say absolutely yes. And uh, got a lot of stuff. So unless, yeah. unless let's let's get to a essay part of things. I need to. Yeah. Your stuff is very critical. So. Anu and Harpal, if you guys.